Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Donald Wayne Dickman here. A blessed Sunday to all of you all out there. I pray that you all are keeping well in the Lord. I also pray that you're running your race faithfully with your eyes set on Jesus Christ. Today, my message is entitled, If Any Man Thirst. The text is taken from John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. Verse 37 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This takes place in Jerusalem during the Feast of the Tabernacles, as you see in John chapter 7, verse 2, he says, Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. And during this celebration, Jesus appears and declares these powerful words. He says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus said, if any man thirst, I'm sure that many of us here know the feeling to be thirsty. Many of us know the feeling to be longing for a glass of cold water. In fact, many people in the world today are thirsty. They have a vacuum within them. They have a hole within them, a yearning that needs to be filled and they don't know how. Sadly, many of these people are going to the wrong places to quench this thirst, but it just gets worse. They become more thirsty as time goes on. They go to alcohol, they go to drugs, they go to nicotine, they go to having sexual activities. Some even jump into one marriage after another marriage. Some from one job to another job. There's no satisfaction. There's a thirst that they are crying out for and it cannot be quenched. They keep wanting more. They need to get drunk more often now. They need to get high more often. They need to experience that dopamine kick more often. And each time they hit that, they are in need for more. They are thirsting for more. And they do not know what to do. They are in a spiral of destruction because they are going to the wrong places to quench their thirst. Other people travel the world. They go from one religious place to another religious place, from one mountain to another mountain, hoping to quench that thirst, hoping to get a solution, hoping to get an answer. But sadly, that thirst is still there. Today, in this text, Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. In this sermon, I will explain to you how to quench that thirst within you, how to feel satisfied, fulfilled, and whole again. John 7, 38, 39 tells us, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The image here is so powerful, is so beautiful. Most people who read this text would like their heart to be filled with this living water. They will like a deep mountain spring overflowing in rivers of living water. Even before we have a clear idea of what this image is referring to, we yearn for it because it seems to imply fullness and completeness to the point of overflowing. It implies sweet coolness and refreshment. It implies moisture and growth and life. And this is what Jesus is talking about. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow 
rivers of living water. Today in this sermon, I will address four points that will help you to quench that thirst within you. To come to a place where you are satisfied, you are fulfilled and you feel whole once again. The first point is Jesus fulfills the Old Testament expectation. As I read earlier, he says in chapter 7 verse 2, Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Jesus comes in the midst of this celebration, the Feast of Tabernacles. So for us to understand these verses in depth, we need to have a clear picture of the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, now it was the last great day of the Feast as he stands up to shout the words of our text today. The origin of this feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, is described in Leviticus chapter 22, where Moses says, You shall dwell in booths or tabernacles for seven days, and all that are native in Israel shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the people of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. God ordained that his people bring to mind in yearly feasts the great things that he has done for them when he delivered them out of the bondage in Egypt. God's purpose in bringing the people out of Egypt and through the wilderness was to show his power and his love for Israel so that she would always cleave to him and trust him and obey him. The feast of boots reminded the people of his trek through the wilderness and how God miraculously provided all their needs. One of the needs God had provided was water. In Exodus 17, Moses tells us how the people soon after the escape from Egypt moved south from the wilderness of Sin and camped at Rephidim. There was no water there. And so instead of trusting God who had parted the Red Sea, the people thirsted there for water and murmured against Moses in Exodus 17 verse 3. So Moses cried to the Lord and God caused water to come out out of the rock. So during the Feast of the Tabernacles, there was daily ceremony involving water. Each day, the priests and the people will joyfully make their way to the pool of Siloam. Using a golden pitcher, water was drawn and taken back to the temple and poured on the altar of the burnt offering. The words of Isaiah 12 verse 3 was then sung. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. So this is the explanation of the Feast of Tabernacles. According to us too, we read just now Jesus is celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. This was a feast that occurred during the first part of the month of October. During this seven day feast, the Jews lived in boots made of three branches to commemorate their forefathers' pilgrimage through the wilderness. On each of these seven days, the high priest would go to the pool of Siloam and draw out water in golden vessels. The water would then be poured out on the altar where the parts of the priest were arranged. As the water was poured out, the people sang unto the Lord and shouted for joy. It was time of great celebration and worship for the people. This kind of celebration continued for seven days. The eighth day was called a great day of the feast. On this day, sacrifices were again offered, but there was no singing and no shouting. This was known as a solemn day of repentance before the Lord. Another element was missing on this day as well. There was no water poured out on the eighth day. It was against this backdrop of silence and symbolism that Jesus stood up 
and proclaimed himself to be the fountain of the living water. When he spoke those words in John 7, 37, 38, 39, thousands would have been present to hear him and everyone who heard him would have instantly understood what he meant. Those that believe in him will have rivers of living water flowing out of their belly, out of their heart. John 7, 37 says, If anyone thirsts, come unto me and drink. If anyone thirsts, come unto me and drink. What was Jesus saying to those gathered at the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem was, you know that rock that gushed water in the desert to renew the dehydrated Israel. The rock was me. I am the rock. That's what Jesus is declaring when he chose to speak on that specific day. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Recognizing the fountain of the living water. Jesus is the fountain of the living water. Saint Paul would later say the same thing in 1 Corinthians 10, 4. They all ate the same spiritual food as we ate. They drank the same spiritual drink as we drink. And they drank from the spiritual rock. That rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. The water that came out of the rock and quenched the thirst of the people of all. Now Jesus stands on that day and says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. And that is a promise Jesus is giving every one of you who's listening. If you got this thirst within you and nothing seems to quench it, you got this longing within you, this yearning within you, and you're trying many things. You think maybe I climb up the ladder more, I earn more money, I buy a bigger house, I buy a bigger car, or I take more alcohol, I get drunk more often, I get high more often, I get involved in all kinds of kinky sexual activities, or I change my wife or husband from one, and it doesn't solve the problem at all. The only way that you will have peace is when you learn to go to Jesus. If any man thirsts, come unto me. Jesus saw himself as the fulfillment of the Jewish feast. He was the fulfillment in the sense that the saving power and grace of God, which the Jews celebrated, were now present and uniquely available in Jesus. So you read the verses in the gospel, Mark 1, 15 says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. John 1, 14 says, the word became flesh and tented or tabernacled among us. John 2, 19 says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. John 3, 14 says, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 32 and 35. Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My father gives you the true bread from heaven. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. Luke 2, 25. You are thirsty for God if you are longing for the consolation of Israel. Luke 23, 51 says, if you are eagerly looking for the kingdom of God, for deliverance from sin and oppression, then no longer look back to days of old. Don't look forward to the future. Look to me. Look to Jesus Christ. Jesus is declaring in me all the past is summed up. And in me, the future hope has arrived. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. So we read about this text, we see the fulfillment was in Jesus. And the other fulfillment of this text was in Pentecost. As we celebrate this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, we see a fulfillment of what Jesus said in verse 37, 38. He says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth in me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of water. And then in verse 39, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because 
that Jesus was not yet glorified. He talks about Pentecost. Pentecost is the day when Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit. Here he says, how of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And the day of Pentecost is the presence of God came of them in such a powerful way that they shook the world for Jesus Christ. A day that we celebrate on this Sunday. Acts chapter 2, verse 16 says, This is that we have spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaidens, I'll pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. In Acts chapter 2, verse 2, we see actually the Pentecost experience and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were standing and they appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire and he sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues the Spirit gave them utterance. Jesus baptized them in the Holy Spirit. They went forth with power. Their lives were transformed. They shook the world for Jesus Christ. And this verse was prophesied in Joel 2, 28, 29. And it shall come to pass after I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and upon the servants and your handmaids in those days I'll pour out my spirit. And today, as we look at this verse in John 7, 37, 38, 39, we see a fulfillment of the Feast of the Tabernacle. We see an explanation of it being fulfilled in Acts chapter 2 in Pentecost. And God desires for all of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus desires the believers to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can go forth and shake the world for Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit will fill us, will empower us mightily for Jesus Christ. So it was on the day of Pentecost that we celebrate today that the true rock gush forth with the Holy Spirit who satisfies our spiritual thirst and renews all who drink of him. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit poured on our disciples just as Jesus has promised he will pour the Spirit upon them. The second point to explain these verses is the nature of this promise. The promise that Jesus gave to them in John 7, 37, 38 is in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. A promise that's foretold in the scripture in many verses. In Isaiah 44 verse 3, he says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I'll pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessings upon thy offering. Isaiah 58 verse 11 And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones so thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose water fail not. Isaiah 55 verse 1 Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters and he that had no money, come ye buy and eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Psalms 36 verse 8 to 9 They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures for with thee is the fountain of life in thy light shall we see light Many verses that support what Jesus came to fulfill in John 7, 37, 38, 39 Zechariah 14, 8, And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them towards the former sea and half of them towards the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Ezekiel 47, verse 1 and 2, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward and from the forefront of the house towards the east and the waters came down from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar then brought 
He me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way they look at eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side. So we see this promise was prophesied or written many times in the Old Testament and Jesus came and fulfilled it. We see also this promise was extended to all believers as we read this text in the last day that great day of Jesus should have cried, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. It's extended to all of you. If you believe Jesus, you go to Jesus, Jesus will quench that thirst. I know many people are struggling. Many people are living on pills to sleep, pills to give them peace. Many people got to take alcohol on a regular basis. If not, they cannot face the day. Many people got to take drugs, got to take cigarettes. Many people get addicted to going to prostitutes, addicted to porn, addicted to many things to get high. And there's no satisfaction in their life. There's no fulfillment. They just want to follow every other person, thinking if they follow that person, they buy their clothes, they behave like that, they talk like that. They will have the satisfaction, but no satisfaction. The only way that the thirst will be quenched is when you come to Jesus. So this is open to everyone. He says, if any man, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. The second promise we see and to explain this, it says, this promise was given after Jesus was glorified. After Jesus was resurrected and ascended into heaven, then Jesus said, this promise will come upon you. Tarry in Jerusalem until you endure with power from on high. The comforter will come. I shall go. Then the comforter will come. He will comfort you. He will reveal the things of heaven to you. He will empower you. He will give you peace. He will guide you and bless you. The third point is the blessings of this promise. What are the benefits of this promise? Let's look in detail. Let's zoom in and see the benefits of this promise that Jesus said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water and this spake he of the spirit. So we need to understand it's the spirit that quenches that thirst. It's not physical water. It is spiritual Jesus talking. That's why when we try to quench that thirst, that longing, that yearning, that, that hollowness, that deep hole within us with physical things, it never solves it. It just gets worse and worse. You try something, now you got to try something more. After trying something more, you got to try something more until you're just destroying yourself. The only way you can solve it is by having the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So the blessings of the Spirit, the first thing we know when you come to Jesus, if any man does come to me, what do you receive is salvation. We know very clear in the Bible, there's so many verses that tells us that Jesus came and died for us and paid the price. And as we surrender our life to him, we become born again. And that can only happen to the power of the Holy Spirit. The second point, the blessings of this promise is satisfaction. When you got that fountain flowing out of you, when that river is flowing out of you, you won't be longing for anything anymore. Suddenly you come to a place of completeness. Shalom, satisfaction, fulfillment when you allow Jesus to quench that thirst with the Holy Spirit. Satisfaction because the rivers of the living water, once it flows out of you, will give you that peace, will give you that love, will give you that satisfaction, that completeness, strength. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 says, that he will grant you according to riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. To be strengthened by might by his spirit in the inner man. When you go to Jesus, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Strength comes upon you. 
You have strength to face each day. You have strength to face the challenges of life, the challenges in your job, in your life, in your family, in your marriage, the challenges that you will receive in this world, the curveballs, the difficulties, the failures, the suddenlies that happen, you have the strength. John 14, 16 says, I will pray the Father and he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Galatians 5, 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things to Christ Jesus, which strengtheneth me. The next is empowerment for mission. The people were baptized in the Holy Spirit for the purpose of empowerment to do the work of mission. That's why we read in Acts 1, 8, it says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The Pentecost that we are celebrating was a time where Jesus baptized the disciples in the Holy Spirit to empower them to do the work of missions effectively that they will go forth and prophesy. They will go forth and move in signs and wonders. They will go forth with boldness. Their focus will be set on what Jesus has for them. Empowerment. The fifth point we learn here about the gifts of the Spirit. When you go to Jesus and you see this, the Holy Spirit working in your life, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Then you see the gifts of the Spirit start to manifest in your life. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11, it talks about the different gifts that we need to use so that we will be effective in our life, in our ministry, in everything we do. The word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working on miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. And the next one is, a promise that we will become a blessings to many people. God, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, when we go to Jesus, he says, if any man thirst, come unto me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Suddenly you see, God will use you. That water that flows out of you will touch lives. Will bring healing, will bring restoration, will bring peace because you have the fountain of the living water now working in your life. Jesus is the fountain of the river and he caused that fountain, that river to flow to you. No need to encourage you, to lift you up, to strengthen you, empower you, but also to go forth and touch lives all around you. That the fruits of the Spirit be manifested in your life. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such as no law. In Galatians 5, 22, 23. And you see all this working in your life because you have the Holy Spirit. The last step is the conditions for the reception of this promise. The conditions or the requirements to receive this promise. The requirements to receive this promise. Number one, the most important condition is we must be thirsty. The word in John 7, 37 says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Psalms 42 says, As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? That's the kind of thirst we must have. As a heart Panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. That is the key requirements for us to receive this promise. The baptism of the Holy Spirit to be filled over and over and over, refreshed with fire, with passion, to be empowered, to move powerfully and shake the world. The fire of the Holy Spirit fall. We must thirst. Are we thirsting? Are we just going through life and we expect nothing to happen? Then nothing will happen. If you want to change, you want to see something different, 
You want to get passion. You need to be hungry. You must be thirsty for the Holy Spirit. Then God will come and pour forth the Holy Spirit afresh upon you. Like how the water gushed out of the rocks. It will gush out of your life and go forth and touch the people all around. The second requirement is for us to receive this promise. We must believe. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. In verse 39, this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. So the important ingredient here is not only thirsty, but we need to believe in Jesus. We need to believe in who he is. We need to believe that we as children of God, as believers, can and should receive the Holy Spirit as the disciples received in the early church. We need to believe that. We cannot have doubts. We cannot let the enemy come and put all kinds of blockage. We need to believe. Third requirement is we need to repent our sins. If you are harboring sin within you, hidden sin, it will be a hindrance from God using you mightily. Acts 2 verse 38, 39. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore be converted, your sins be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And the fourth requirement is we need to drink. We need to thirst. We need to believe. We need to repent. And we need to actually drink. When you pray for God to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, when you pray for a fresh infilling, you need to drink. You need to have faith to receive it. You need to push away every doubt, push away every hindrance and receive it. You need to know as I thirst, as I believe, as I repent, that infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for me as a believer. It's how God baptized me in the book of Acts chapter 2. God will baptize me as a believer. And not only baptize me, I want to be filled over and over and over. I need to believe it. I'm going to drink. So keep on drinking. And as you drink, you see, you'll be filled over and over and over. That's why he says, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. Not only that, drink. You got to drink. You got to receive it by faith. That's what it means. You got to receive it by faith. You got to know it's yours as a child of God. You're entitled to enjoy it because that's what Jesus baptized early this morning. And just what Jesus wants you to be baptized so that you can be effective. You can be powerful. You can shake the world for Jesus Christ. So there are many other ways for us to maintain the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to continue to see the Holy Spirit working in our life. Number one is by continuously singing praises and psalms and spiritual songs unto the Lord. As Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and 19. Be not drunk with wine wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. The next thing is by studying the Word of God. Ephesians 6, 70 says, And the helmet of salvation, the sword of Spirit, which is the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9-11 to As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love Him. But God had revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, save the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we need to study the word and pray that the Holy Spirit will bring the word of life to us. Spiritual things will be open to our understanding. Next is by praying and making requests regarding the Spirit. Praying, spending time with God, Asking God, praying in the Holy Spirit so that things, heavenly things will be revealed to us. And these are the requirements for us so that you and I can enjoy this promise that Jesus proclaimed in John 7, 37, 38, 39. So I encourage you today as we celebrate 
this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, I want to encourage you to desire, to thirst for the Holy Spirit, to thirst for a fresh infilling, to thirst for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit will gush out of you, like how He gushed on the rock in the Old Testament. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And Jesus is declaring to all of you all who listen to message, if any man thirsts, Come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, how his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The peace, the joy, the strength, the healing, the power, the miracles can never come from anywhere else other than the Holy Spirit. You might be trying to quench that thirst with all kinds of matters. You're going over and over and daily and going and going. You are in fact actually going to addiction and destroying your life. Now I want to encourage you. Go to Jesus as he declared here. If any man thirst, come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Your life will be transformed. Your life will be renewed. You'll be empowered. The peace of God will be upon you. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Mm -hmm.